It doesn't get more exciting in golf for me than that day right there. For as long as he can remember, he'd always wanted to be a golfer. Growing up in Augusta, how could you not? You know, I can remember some things with uh, with Dad. As he was a big influence with me in my golf. We'd, we'd we'd chip balls in the front yard. He was always harping on the short game, and uh, you know, I think I think it served me well. Before long, young Larry Mize was working at Augusta National, home of the Masters. I was loving it, and uh, you know, I was on the third scoreboard, and you'd climb up the ladder and put the numbers on there, and you'd have the little windows, and you'd you'd open the window and peek out and try and watch the play on the third hole. And as a kid, you were just uh, you were in hog heaven out there. Yeah. <laughs> But who could have known that one day he'd go on to win the whole thing? In 1987, in a playoff with Seve Ballesteros and Greg Norman, Larry Mize chipped in from around 100 feet to claim the green jacket, one of the most dramatic finishes ever seen at this famous old golf course. People say, when did you know it was going in? Not till it went in. I mean, it looked good, but I hit it and it looked great. I'm frozen, just watching it frozen. And, uh, you know, it goes in the hole and I, throw my club up and I ran around screaming like a madman, just, you know, total, total elation. What was the noise like when it went in? Oh, it was, uh, it was kind of deafening. It really was. David, my oldest son, was week shy of a year. and Poor thing, he sc it scared him to death. He's, he's crying. Bonnie's saying, it's okay, it's just dad. That was 30 years ago, and he can remember it like it was yesterday. It's going to be a new thing when I've turned to page two. Let's see here. The glue's not oh, holding yes. up too it's, well. It's 30-year-old glue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whether it's in a scrapbook or in his own mind, the memories are indelible, and he'll do whatever it takes to preserve them. I think uh, that says it all. I'm, I'm screaming, and I'm just uh, total excitement, just pure excitement right there. Yeah. yeah. So. Norman can't believe Mises' impossible shot went in. Right. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't expecting that, and, and who could expect it? But, you know, in golf, you always have to expect the worst from your opponent so, you, so, so that you're ready for it. So. Yeah. But it is hard to, hard to expect me to make it from there. How often do you think you've seen it on TV? Not enough. <laughs> you know, it, it, one mistake I, I realized looking back, I would have probably watched it more and relived it more. I probably, I tried to go beyond it and continue to move on and stuff a little too quickly. And that's what I tell any, anybody now, savor this, enjoy it. So you never played a ball that's landed anywhere near there? So no, you... no, never been, never been really close to that spot that I remember. I mean, that's the only way I'd play it again is if I hit it over there. If I hit it there in the practice round, I'd move it. I wouldn't play it. Really? <laughs> no, no, uh, it's just such a great memory. I don't want to ruin it by having, oh yeah, I hit another shot from there and this is what happened. Uh, it's, it, you know, I did it when I needed to and I want to keep that memory pure and it's been, uh, it's been great for 30 years.